Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 92, Merry Disneymas. I'm your host, <laughs> Joseph Whalen, and my festive and giving co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing today, sweetheart? I'm good. I just kind of, you know, I see all the stuff here, but then seeing it in the... On the screen, I'm like, wow, Holiday just kind of threw up yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's okay, because, you know, yeah, you yeah, have to have something to look forward to. Santa right? Claus and Hanukkah Harry just threw up all over our set. He just went, uh, here. <laughs> so, but credit goes to you and Madison. You guys mm-hmm. did a, a nice job decorating the set. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you did a good job decorating yourself, Thank apparently. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yes, this is our holiday special. Mm-hmm. Or a holiday edition, I guess. Right. Um, it's also uh, worth noting that this is going to be our last podcast for 2020. Oh, no! Which also means that 2020 is almost to an end, thankfully. Thank goodness. Um, yeah. We will be taking a slight hiatus for the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And we'll be back after the first of the year with a fresh new podcast. Mm-hmm. And hopefully some modifications to the set here to compensate for some of the technical issues we've been running into. Right, right. Uh, but today we do have a, a Disney-centric podcast, I guess we could say. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, if you are, you know, into entertainment, which hopefully if you're listening to our podcast, you, you are, you know that the, you know, Disney Investor Day happened uh earlier this week or later this week i should say and you know basically it was just four hours of everything you know every division you know um entertainment wise nothing with the parks Uh, you know this was all television movie disney plus uh related and really more information than we found out at, you know, comic cons or, you know, or, or anything else, you know, throughout the year. So this was, you know, and again, a, as we go through it, a lot of stuff we kind of already knew about. And here it was just more confirmation and, you know, some timelines with it, too. So it was just, again, it was so much information because not only was it Disney, it was Star Wars, it was, you know, their other entertainment, you know, entities. So... If you're not into Disney or, or or Star Wars, this probably isn't going to be, you know, the podcast for you to uh, to listen to. Yeah, so this week, uh, Christmas comes early, courtesy of Disney. Uh, their Investor Day had a treasure trove of new projects um, on the near horizon, which was what was the interesting thing. Right. You're mm-hmm. only looking a few years out for some of these. Uh, so today in our Disney Detective, we're going to talk about uh, some of the announcements from the animation department and from Pixar. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, we've got an array of new shows coming to Disney Plus for Star Wars. And we have two new feature films with directors that I think we can all agree on. Uh, In our entertainment news, sticking with the Disney theme, Marvel gets uh, its due with a series of new projects and a whole bunch more on that side of things, Mm -hmm. on the entertainment side of things. Uh, and then hopefully we'll have time at the end of the show to actually finish up with our insightful picks. If not, we'll just skip them. <laughs> uh, we've we've got a lot of stuff to talk about yeah, today. Yeah. But before we get into that, I do want to invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get our video versions listed as insights into things. You can get our audio versions listed as insights into entertainment. We're available on Apple Podcast, Spotify, 
Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon, and Pandora. Uh, we would also invite folks to uh, reach out to us and give us your feedback. Tell us how we're doing. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are on Twitch six days a week at twitch.tv slash insights into things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or you can reach out directly to us on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Shall we dive in? Let's do it. All right. Go for Disney Detectives. So, again, you know, basically everything we're going to be talking about is what came out during the Investor's Day. Um, so they, they broke everything down. So, um, so part of the animation area uh, for Disney animation, there are a lot of projects that are in the works. Uh, there is a um, movie that is set to premiere on Disney Plus uh, via Premiere Access. So I'm guessing that's what they're calling their um, uh, premium plan, like what they did with Mulan. The $30. The $30. Yeah. Um, now, they didn't mention if that's how much this was going to be, but it is uh, Raya and the Last Dragon, and that's actually supposed to be coming out on uh, March 5th of next year to Disney Plus uh, via the premiere access and also in theaters. So they're they're doing that, um, you know, uh, what Warner Brothers was basically doing, HBO Max and the theaters as well. Uh, then they have Bayamax, which is a series based on Big Hero 6 that'll be arriving in early 2022. Now there is already a Big Hero 6 uh a series that's already on on the Disney Channel, so I don't know how this is going to be um, different uh, from it. Then they're uh, coming out with a Zootopia um, show that'll be called Zootopia Plus, and that will be hitting the streaming service in spring 2022. Then they're also doing a Tiana show uh, based on The Princess and the Frog. I'm guessing that's also going to kind of help tie in the change to uh, Splash Mountain because they're going to be changing that ride over to Princess and the Frog so I'm sure that's probably going to help with that. Uh, that's supposed to be hitting Disney Plus 2023. Then they're also going to be doing a long form musical comedy series for Mo uh, Moana Moana <laughs> Moana <laughs> <laughs> Where's our daughter when when we need her? Uh, that will also be uh, in 2023, coming to Disney Plus. Uh, then Lin, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda is in development of a new movie, uh, Encanto, um, which is actually set in Colombia. No dates with that. And then there is a, another series, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, which is a long-form series uh, that will also be premiering on Disney Plus in 2022. A Waju? Sure, we'll go with that. So the nice thing is not everything's coming out all at once. This is kind of like their long term. So we have things for next year, 2022, 2023. And we know that it takes them a while to to produce sure, and yeah. and create all Especially of these things. Current oh, oh, I'm sure. Now that's just under the Disney brand. Then of course you have Pixar. Um and Pixar announced a whole bunch of different projects. Uh they're coming out with the Spark sh uh Spark Shorts episode uh which will run on um Disney Plus starting on Christmas actually. Then they have a uh a show called Disney um sorry uh, Pixar Popcorn, which will feature iconic Pixar characters, and that will start in January. Then there is a show that they are coming out in fall of 2021 called Doug Days, which features Doug from Up. Squirrel! So that'll be kind of cute. Um, then they're also coming out with a Cars series, 
uh, which is following uh, Lightning McQueen and Mater. That's coming fall of 2022. And then they're also coming out with Win or Lose, which is Pixar's first original long form animated series about a middle school softball team. And that's going to be coming to Disney Plus fall of 2023. So that's all of the different series that they're doing. In terms of movies, they shared that they are um, coming out with Luca, which is a movie set in Italy about a boy named Luca. And that'll hit theaters in June of 2021. Luca Bronson. Uh, probably not. <laughs> um, then this one actually already had some controversy. Um, Lightyear, which is an origin story of Buzz Lightyear, who will actually be voiced by Chris Evans. And that is supposed to be hitting theater summer 2022. And the buzz that was about that was how dare you not have Buzz Lightyear voiced by Tim Allen. But the idea is it's not centered around the toy. It's the person that did the likeness for the toy. So that's the character that Chris Evans is supposedly playing in this. And then the last one, which I thought this is going to be so much fun for our family, is uh, a movie, a Pixar movie called Turning Red about a 13-year-old girl going through puberty that transforms into a giant red panda when she gets excited. And that one's actually in development, so there was no date for for that. So a giant red panda. <laughs> I can totally see <laughs> our daughter going like, yep. Now I can see the, to the big red panda when she gets mad <laughs> versus when she, you know, gets excited. This so. is a lot of different things for them to be doing. Yeah. I and, mean, you know, and and kind of with going along the lines of, um, you know, the story that we talked about with Warner Brothers and their decision to release things not only in the theaters for those that can and want to go to the theater, but doing it on on um, HBO Max is that we're starved for new content. You know, we're we're looking for something to sure. look forward to. Well, um, I mean, I think that's certainly the philosophy that Disney's banking on here mm -hmm. is that people are starved for content. I don't know if we're that starved. I don't know if we need all. Of, and and when, I'll get into it more when we get to our the Star next Wars, part. Yeah. But like. Everyone doesn't need an origin story, guys. <laughs> right. True. And, and and I mean, we're giving a series to Doug the dog. Okay. That's a little extreme. And I could see that being more, uh, you know, something geared towards, you know, the younger kids. Right. Um, as just something that, you know, and maybe it's because they didn't talk about what was going to be coming like to Disney Channel just more Disney Plus, so maybe it's more along the lines of it, it's something like a Doc McStuffins or uh, Sophia the First, where it's possible, it's, yeah. it's just that yeah. that um, original content that you can only find on Disney Plus that's not on um, you know the Disney Channel. Maybe maybe that's what it is. And, and again, it's timelines. You know, for the next three you know two to three years in in some cases so and and it's, you know a, a number of these as they go through their development phases i'm sure will either be altered or canceled or right you're not going to see all this stuff come to fruition right but it, it you know it's nice to to hear that there's so many different things out there and so many different types of things yes some of them are are refurbished sure. characters but it's nice that there are those that new content as well yeah and you know there are people out there who absolutely fall in love with a lot of these obscure mm -hmm. secondary characters mm -hmm. and would love like you know like wouldn't you love to see a haunted mansion series absolutely out, like to tell the stories yeah of haunted, like something and like that was that. what like the comic book right that that right. came out was doing so like that would like be that is, mm -hmm. that's how i kind of picture these is like you've got those people that love doug the dog right you know we thought he was hilarious in the movie right I, I didn't think there was enough story behind them to have an entire series, but right. you know, it's Disney. They can they can make a story out of right. anything. Right. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what comes out and we'll see how, how what kind of quality it is. Yeah. So that was it for Disney Detective. Yeah, so a whole lot of new Disney stuff, you know, in the horizon for, you know, 
next couple of years. All right. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with our tales from the edge of the galaxy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. We are back talking entertainment news in our episode 92, Merry Disney Mass. And we are go for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Oh, for some reason I was expecting it to do more than that. I was like, oh, that's it. Oh, that's me. <laughs> so as part of Disney Investor Day, there was a whole lot of stuff coming out about Star Wars. And again, a lot of it we kind of knew ahead of time. Uh, this was just more little confirmation and then a little bit more information about some of the things that we already knew that were coming. Um, so Disney Plus is getting two new Star Wars shows, which are both spinoffs of The Mandalorian. One is Rangers of the New Republic and... Uh, the other is uh, Ahsoka. Ahsoka. I, I don't know why. When I look at it, I can't. It's pronounced just the way it's spelled. Sure. Um, Ahsoka. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then there are also three shows that are, uh, and the three shows are planned to feature crossovers as well in the future. Now, we kind of figured Ahsoka, there were, you know, they were going to be doing something else with it because you don't make this big deal about her you know, showing up in, in one of the episodes and be like, all right, we're done. You know, so we kind of knew there was going to be something else. But the one that you were, you know, a little excited about or interested in was the Rangers of the New Republic. You, you know, so you can elaborate on, on that. Well, with the Rangers of the New Republic, it's set at the same time as a Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. And I think this is an excellent opportunity to finally bridge that gap from the original trilogy that ended with Return of the Jedi and the new stuff that starts with Force Awakens. We're starting to see hints of that in Mandalorian, but I think Rangers of the New Republic will actually be able to delve into that and the rise of the First Order and the downfall of the Republic Senate and all that stuff. So I'm not sure they didn't announce who's going to be in it. Right. But I think we've seen glimpses of that already with mm -hmm. our two TIE fighter, our two X-wing pilots that are right. going around and sort of policing the the outer rim here. So I think there's a tremendous amount of fringe storytelling to happen. So is it going to be kind of like a cop show, Star Wars cop show? I can almost <laughs> see it being like a buddy cop show type thing as they go right. around and, and deal with little things that that come up around the okay. Uh, the galaxy. And again, like you said, bridging that gap and showing you how right. the galaxy has changed since the the fall of the Empire, but realizing... It's like lethal weapon in space. There you go. Okay. So I could totally see yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, then obviously they mentioned uh, Star Wars The Bad Batch, which they had already talked about before, which is the animated series about the Bad Batch of clones from the Clone Wars, and that will debut exclusively on Disney+. Plus. Then we knew about Star Wars Andor, uh, which uh, stars Rogue One's uh, Diego Luna. That is coming to Disney Plus in 2022. Um, then the next one, what's that? The Acolyte. The Acolyte, um, which is a new series that is helmed by Russian Dolls creator uh, Leslie 
um, Headland? Headland, which is set in the High Republic era of the franchise, and that is also coming to Disney+. Plus. So this you... one was interesting, too, because okay, so this... far the whole concept of the High Republic okay. was only laid out in the comics, and they had no plans for doing anything outside of that. This is the first thing that we're seeing here where they're actually going to do some kind of series on Disney Plus, or I'm assuming Disney Plus at this case, in this case. Yeah, coming to Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're going to be able to see those comic book characters come to life okay. to a certain extent. Okay, gotcha. Which All is right. kind of neat. Oh, and the other thing that's worth mentioning is the period of the High Republic falls within Yoda's lifetime. Oh. So you can very well expect to see that Yoda's Yoda going to be. Okay. I would right. totally expect. Right, right. Uh, and then. You know, and some of the big news, which again, there were lots of rumors that this was going to be happening, is that Hayden Christensen is going to be returning as Darth Vader in the Obi Wan Kenobi series. Now, no real talks of is it flashbacks? Is it present day? Well, and if you um, look at it from a canon standpoint, right? When Obi Wan and Darth Vader meet on the Death Star in A New mm-hmm. Hope. They hadn't seen each other. They hadn't known about each other's existence right. since Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. So to interweave Darth Vader into this story, you know, unless it's going to be stuff that's Darth Vader gets his own storyline out of this, mm. and it happens around the same time as Obi Wan, they right. had no interaction. Or I could see it being something where Obi Wan is like following where Darth Vader doesn't know Obi-Wan's around. Uh, so they never have any inter- Obi-Wan. Right. So like they never have any actual interaction, but he's keeping tabs on him. Because obviously the other thing too is that he's keeping tabs on on Luke as well. He you know, Obi-Wan knows well, he's about at least on the same planet as Luke. Right. So he knows about the kids, so it's a matter of making sure Luke doesn't have any sort of interaction or any knowledge of Darth Vader. Darth Vader doesn't have any, you know, so I could see maybe doing something been, like I don't that. See, I don't see us having any epic duels between Vader and oh, Kenobi or anything like that. Right. There's nothing where they're going to actually anything that they show with them together, I think is going to be from the past. Right. Anything that you see in quote unquote present time, it'll just kind of be Right. You know, a and that's passing. a limited series too. And they right. already announced that it's going to be a limited series. Right, right. Um, so that was kind of uh, interesting. Then, of course, there was a droid story, which is a new project for Disney Plus, which will feature a new hero alongside R two D two and C three PO. That kind of sounds like it would be an, another that's a kid's kid one. thing. That's like uh, Caravan of Carriage that came out after Return of the Jedi. Oh, okay. Kids movie. Okay. Um, then another thing that was kind of uh, interesting was Star Wars. Lando, which is a new event series coming to Disney Plus. So I guess it's just like a one off. Um, so I don't know if it's a, like a movie but which or if Lando it's. Lando is it? Well, that's the whole thing. Do you, I could see them doing like both, you know, if you do. Like a chronology y- type yeah, thing. Yeah, like a young Lando to, you know, and, and end up with. Billy D, because sure, how do you not have that. both? Because again, that's the thing, you right. know. At, at least Lando, like they were both very Lando, <laughs> if that makes any sense. If you understand, you understand. Um, and then Star Wars Vision, which is an upcoming anime anthology series, which is also coming to Disney Plus. Not to be Plus. confused with Wanda Vision, <laughs> right? Just totally, totally different one. So if you're a fan of anime, hey, yeah, here's a I'm Star not. Wars. I know, anime I know. Is like the art of I know. animation. I know, I like, know. Like that's the one that's coming out of this. That, that you're that like. That I, eh. Not only do we not need it, I'd prefer not to have it. Well, I'm sure there are some people out there that. I'm sure well, there are. Like, like the closest that. thing, the quality anime that I've seen in Star Wars was the Gennady Tarkatov uh, version of Clone Wars, the micro series. Okay. That was well done. Okay. Other than that, yeah, don't have much love for okay. anime. So that was all of the television stuff that was going to be coming. Now, again, you have between really the only thing that they gave dates on was 
um, for Andor, which is 2022. Everything else they didn't give uh, any dates for as as of right now. Um, and then, obviously, the news of the two new Star Wars movies that are in the works. Uh, so the one is actually going to be directed by Patty Jenkins, who is the uh, director of Wonder Woman 1984. She'll be directing the next Star Wars movie, Rogue Squadron, which is actually due out in December of 2023. And then Disney also discussed the untitled uh, Taika Waititi uh, Star Wars movie, which was first announced in May, and that is now been in development. So no real information about that, but it is something that's that's in the works. Well, and what's the most interesting about those two announcements are the directors. Absolutely. Both of them are fantastic storytellers. Mm-hmm. And none of them have a bad reputation with Star Wars movies at this point. Nope, nope. And from what I heard, not to, you know, cross over from from Star Wars or Disney even, um, but uh, the the first round of um, uh, reviews of Star War of, sorry, Wonder Woman 1984 is fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nobody's, <clears throat> you know, giving it a bad... Uh, review well, so and far. The fact so. that she's doing a Rogue Squadron. Now, Rogue Squadron was a novel series mm-hmm. that was an awesome novel series. It was it was one of the better novel series from the uh, Legacy mm-hmm. series. And I'm hoping that they pull in some of the storylines from that, some okay. of the characters from that. If they do that, it'll be awesome because it, that's another one of those ones where it wasn't a Skywalker centric storyline. Mm-hmm. And it, it really. Stories like that and the Mandalorian and stuff like that really help to expand the universe. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a big giant galaxy out there. Yes, it is. And there's a lot of things that can happen, a lot of characters that can happen. And when you're dedicating, you know, screen real estate to Rogue Squadron, where you can get an ensemble cast and make them shine, I think it's a fantastic idea. And you know, anything that Take About TD does, I love. So oh, absolutely. He could he could direct. You know, the phone book, and, and I'd, <laughs> I'd watch it. So that was all we had for our tales from the edge of the galaxy. I think there's a lot of stuff in there that is stuff that we knew, like you would say. Mm-hmm, right. Uh, some of it's stuff we probably don't need. I'm I'm concerned that they're flooding the market. Right. Much like they did when they, when they started putting out new movies, like, you know, Bad Batch. We don't really need that because we know what that timeline is going to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you're regressing the story at that point when you keep going back and, and retelling old stories. Right, right. Um, and or yeah, we kind of know how that one ends, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, and, and that's the interesting thing is with some of these, it's like, it, you know, we know there's an infinite end to it. So how long are you going to be able to... You know, well, and the way they pitched it. the Andor series was kind of neat. They, they pitch it as a spy thriller. It's almost mm-hmm. kind of like a James Bond. Okay, or a, I uh, can see that. Um, uh, Jack Ryan type spy thriller type thing. I, I could see him going that direction because mm-hmm. you didn't really get that feel out of him. Like in Rogue One, like he had a history. Right. And you didn't um, know what it was. And you didn't know what it was. But, you know, just like with Han Solo, I Do don't you need, need to... to know what it is. Right. Right. You know, you've established the character, the fact that he has a history. He's got a checkered dark past. Right. That was all I needed to know for that movie. Yeah, yeah. When you go back and you flush these characters out at a deeper level, you risk ruining those characters. Mm. Like they did with Boba and Vader and Han Solo and Chewbacca and every other character they went back and flushed out. Mm. The only character they haven't ruined so far has been Lando. Lando was even more of a badass after the Han Solo movie. True, than, true. Than it helped before. to, yeah, make him. But every yeah. other character well, they ruined. That. So how I, did they ruin Darth Vader though? Whiny Anakin. Oh, that becomes Darth Vader. I, this, I was thinking Rogue One, where they like no, made no, him no, the no. badass. He, he, that, the whole you know. the whole prequel trilogy where he's okay, this whiny little boy who right, misses right. his mommy. Like that's not the Vader that I want to see. <laughs> I want to see the Vader from Rogue One who's, right. who walks down a corridor of and pew, pew, 20 pew, pew, and guys and kills dead. them all by blinking at them. That's Vader. 
But you couldn't tell that he was blinking because he was wearing a mask. Well, that's true. <laughs> but the problem is, is they right, ruined I gotcha. him before. No, no, no. I got gotcha. you. So they kind of made up for it when they... Right. I see, I see where so you're So that, that's my concern is that mm-hmm. I don't need to see these characters flushed out. Right. You know? So that's where I'm always hesitant about that because they've got a terrible track record of it so far. Right. No, I get it. You know, one out of five characters they got right. Four characters they've basically trashed. Okay. So... Let's not do that anymore. Mm. Let's look to the future. Let's look at bringing new characters in. Let's look at bridging that mm-hmm. 35-year gap from Jedi to Force Awakens, and let's tell a story. Right. Let's not retell a story and recreate characters okay. that are already established. I gotcha. You're, at that point, you're doing what George Lucas has done, and you're going back and re-editing the Mona Lisa. Okay. Now, you didn't have anything for your Mando moments. No, no Mando so, moments this week. Didn't know if you wanted to. No, no. I thought, you know, there wasn't anything really that stuck out too much this week that I think were okay. discussion. So that'll be next week after the season finale. Okay. But so. we're not here next week. Well, then I guess we'll have to do Mando moments after the new year. Okay. We're just going to have to wait for my brilliant insight into it. <laughs> I know they're going to be on their edge of the seat. They're going to be going, oh, my God, when will he be back? So I will hear what he has to say. And I'll tell you what, if people are listening and they're they're dying to hear what my Mando (laughs) moments are, I'll even I'll even recap the, the two weeks, this week and next week. Email comments and insights into things, and I'll post it up on our Medium site. I'll post the whole article up there. Wow. People. All I need is one request for Just it, one. And I'll write an entire article and post it up on Medium. <laughs> Maybe that'll actually inspire me. There you go. To do something. Uh, what do we got now? That's it for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Yes. We do have actually a, a viewer watching right now. Uh, good Day Today is watching. Hi, Good Day Today. And they agree that Lando was a badass, so <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with our entertainment news of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. for Entertainment News of the Week. There's just so much noise. (laughs) Um, So, again, our entertainment is pretty much about everything that came out again during uh, the Disney Investor Day. Um, So they talked about uh, Marvel and what was coming to Disney+. Plus. Uh, so WandaVision, which we knew was the first Marvel studio show coming out to Disney+, Plus, uh, they uh, premiered a new trailer, and that is actually coming out next month, uh, January 15th. Then they talked about the Falcon and Winter Soldier, which they also had a full trailer, and that has a March release date. Um, Then they had the first look at Loki, which is the Disney's uh, short series based on um, the character Loki. Uh, That show will actually be for May of 2021. Uh, So it it seems like a lot of the Marvel stuff is actually what's coming out first, because that's the stuff that they were working on before everything shut down, really, with the the pandemic. Uh, Then we have Hawkeye, which is premiering on Disney Plus late fall of 2021. Uh, The studio also confirmed that Haley Steinfeld will be appearing in the series. And there were actually rumors about that months ago uh, because there were pictures of her in New York in the Hawkeye 
costume. Um, so there was there was that. So of course, again, now finally confirming that. Um, the series that I'm actually very interested in is the What If animated series uh, from Marvel that will feature voices of the acting cast of many of the MCU stars uh, got a new trailer and uh, their first official uh, look at the upcoming series. No date yet uh, as for that. Then, of course, um, they announced uh, Disney Plus Ironheart, which is... um, uh, which was uh, a What's protege. A vampire who can't die. <laughs> no. It's the whole Tony Stark um, uh, thing where Don Cheadle will actually reprise the role of uh, Rhodey, and um, I guess she creates an armor that's. I guess she's the female version of Iron Man, or you know, the next creation of it so that was kind of uh big news uh no release date uh yet for that um then obviously they had already talked about uh she hulk and uh miss marvel but what was funny was with she hawk um they had announced it a couple of months ago uh that tatiana uh um meslea who starting off orphan black that she was going to be in it. Then like a week later, they were like, no, 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 she's not in it. And now it's confirmed that she is in it. So it's kind of like, well, wait a second. You said she was, then she's oh, not one of the worst kept Disney <laughs> secrets ever. <laughs> right. Right. And then obviously, um, you know, they're talking about, you know, Captain, Amer- uh, Captain Marvel two. Then, uh, they were actually talking, uh, Marvel studios is working on a new guardians of the galaxy holiday special, for Disney Plus, which will come out for uh, 2022, and that will actually be directed by James Gunn, um, and also that will kind of coincide with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three coming out for 2023, uh, and then they also said that they were going to be coming out with an I Am Groot series of shorts. Oh, that should be some interesting <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> when I heard that, I was kind of like. Do we really need? I am Groot. I, I am, am Groot. I am Groot. I am. Groot. It's almost as bad as the the Wookiee scene from the original <laughs> right. Star Wars special. All right. Special. Um, so that's all the the different television uh, stuff that's all going to be coming, obviously, to Disney Plus. And then for the movies, obviously, you know the kind of the the big news was that. Um, uh, Black Panther 2, they're not going to recast uh, Chadwick Boseman as, um, you know, I guess there had been rumors that maybe they were going to recast him. They came out and basically said, nope, you know, we'll pay homage to him, but the story is going to continue, um, you know, past, past that. Um, then they said that a third Ant-Man film, uh, Ant-Man in the Wasp, uh, Qu- Quad... Uh, Quantum Mania is officially in development, um, and then Doctor Strange and the Multi Universe of Madness will tie in both the upcoming WandaVision and the third uh, Spider-Man movie uh, as well. Um, and then finally, Marvel Studios is working on the new Fantastic Four movie. Um, so again, a lot of the movie stuff we kind of already knew was going to be happening and again a lot of the television stuff we already knew but now we actually have dates on that um and then you know part of the the other aspects um you have the the national geographic uh section of of disney plus uh will smith and chris helmsworth will actually star in uh some series uh that are under the national geographic um uh, branch of Disney Plus, um, and then they're doing uh, an Ice Age spinoff, uh, starting Simon Pegg. Uh, so that's going to be you know coming to to Disney Plus as well. And then of course, <laughs> with all of that, there's hey now that we're making all this new stuff in Disney Plus, guess what? We're raising the price. <laughs> which, and I called that. Oh, you I totally. Mean, it was just over a year, and they decided mm-hmm. to raise their price, and then you're going to wind up doing. 
the same thing with this that they did with the parks. They're going to raise the price every year now. So Disney Plus is getting its first price hike in March of 2021. The per month rate will go uh, to $7.99 per month. Currently, it's $6.99. But again, most people have it in some sort of bundle. So, you know, we our subscription, I think, started in November. So we're good until November of next year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens you know how much it is you know by the time you know it, it's time for us to renew and then of course disney's new bundle will offer ad free hulu disney plus and espn for 18.99 um a month uh they also talked about um how you know they have surpassed you know 86 million subscribers as of december which we you know had heard uh, that it had grown, obviously, much more than they had anticipated for their first year. And then the other interesting thing is that they already started talking about um, Disney is unveiling uh, Star, which is, is which, let's try this again, it's, it's Hulu replacement for international Disney Plus subscribers. For so, those of you who have a VPN and decide <laughs> you want to have that service. Right. So this was something... Uh, we were talking about last week where there was that, you know, we're kind of getting rid of Hulu or are we merging it together? So for international, they already have it. The service will launch in certain European countries, Canada, New Zealand on February 23rd, and then is coming to Japan and South Korea later in 2021. And basically they... You know, that was actually the one part of the the stream that I, I saw. And they basically have, you know, it's everything all together. Um, you can just look to see what the sports scores are of games, or you can actually click to watch the different games. And uh, you can watch things that are live, or you can click, you know, once it's done, if it's um, a, a, a game that you can rewatch, it'll give you that option. Um, you know, so that was kind of, you know, interesting, you know, for that, no word as to when or if that was coming, uh, you know, to the U.S., but it is going, uh, you know, to the international subscribers, too. Um, and then another article that actually came from the New York Times talked about, you know, all the different stars and um, uh, characters that will be making return uh <laughs> returns to various movies and, and stuff that wasn't part of um, the other topics. Uh, so we had uh, AD, Amy Adams, who is returning as Princess Giselle. Um, that was the Enchanted movie uh, from 2007. So there's a follow-up Disenchanted that's coming to Disney+. Plus. Uh, then also, you know, some of the news. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Search for the Sacred Walker. <laughs> He's yeah. like 78 years old. He's going to reprise the role of Indiana Jones again. Yeah, so this is his, you know, supposedly fifth and final one. Um, and they're officially in pre-production now. Um, and then, obviously, we had talked about Chris Evans playing Buzz Lightyear. Um, Whoopi Goldberg is doing a Sister Act 3, which, okay. I'm not sure we need that, but okay. Sure. Um, and then John Mulaney and Adam Sandberg are actually going to be playing the Rescue Rangers. I saw that. uh, so that's you know Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. So I, th it's a, a a live action animated hybrid. So I'm guessing they're going to be doing the voices of Chip and Dale. Yeah, it's not who I would have picked. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Sure, I guess that can work. Yeah. So you know, again, so much stuff came out of it. You know, again, more so than we've uh, you know heard at. Um, you know, uh, San Diego or with New York even. And of course, this year was supposed to be a D23 convention. Right. So I'm guessing maybe this was like, hey, we didn't have that, but we do Investor Day and we'll just. So I'm going to go on the everything. record now with my first New Year's resolution <laughs> and say that the first episode back of this podcast in the new year will have no Disney stories whatsoever, not even in the Disney detective section. <laughs> After this entire show has been dedicated to Disney, I think we need to have a non-Disney day. That's just my... Of course, I don't really believe in New Year's resolutions <laughs> and I never follow through with them, but I'm just putting it out there. Okay. 
So, just for the record. Sure. <laughs> so that was all we had for everything Disney. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with our uh, insightful picks of the week, which are not Disney. Nope. Thankfully. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Go for your non-Disney <laughs> insightful pick. You're so far. I should have done one just just because, but you know, I didn't have any. Um, so I took a page out of your uh, your book that uh, you you usually do, and I watched a documentary. <laughs> Uh, this was on uh, Amazon Prime, um, and it is Queen Victoria, Secrets of a Queen. Uh, it's from 2001, so it's a little dated with some of their references, because they talk about... She's 92. That's really not that far back for her. Queen Victoria. Oh, not Victoria. Queen of, I'm sorry. I thought, wrong queen. I'm sorry. Wrong, wrong queen. queen. So it's about Queen Victoria. So at the time, she was the longest reigning monarch in British history, which has now Queen Elizabeth is now. Right. So that's where some of the um, the dated information uh, is when they kind of reference uh, reference that. Um, but it, it was interesting. It was it. it I have a feeling even though it came out in 2001, it might have been a little bit older than that. Um, but what was kind of weird was um, when they would show a picture of something, they would say the description of it, I guess, if you were watching in closed captioning. So that that kind of threw me off every now and then. It was like, here we see a castle in springtime. And I'm like, what? So, so that was a little, you know, once you got used to it, it was okay. Um, but again, it was interesting because you, I've always been a little fascinated with Victoria and how she came to, you know, to be. And obviously, um, you know, she kind of became, you know, it helped usher in, you know, this empire where, you know, the sun never set on it. And, you know, th there's talk in it how, you know, she really wasn't involved, but yet she was involved. And, and then, obviously, um, you know, Prince Albert had a very big part in, in certain things. And, you know, when he passed away, you know, she wasn't really seen for many years. And it wasn't until, you know, many years later when she did finally, you know, come out and, and was in front of the public you know but she did help to to usher in you know the industrial revolution um you know and and just made you know the united kingdom such a strong you know powerful nation you know at that time and then you know and and it's just amazing you know with with all the children that she had and and you know all the different countries that you know, ended up having rulers that were all based from, you know, Victoria. You know, you had this one went to Prussia and this one went to Germany and this one went here and, you know, and just and to, they all fought each other during World War One. And and that's the other thing, too, is that you had, you know, siblings, you know, at her her funeral who, you know, that was the only time that they were civil with each other after that, you know. I'm familiar with that concept. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... You know, if you are, uh, you know, interested in British history, you know, it, it was only an hour long, so it wasn't very, very long. Um, and, and, you know, pretty, pretty well done. So. Okay. Very good. Nice pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is a, unsurprisingly, a documentary. Um, but it's one that is kind of theme to our holiday special here. It's called The First Silent Night on Amazon Prime. Join renowned actor Simon Callow as he uncovers the moving origins of Silent Night. Simon journeys to the Austrian village of Ambendorf as well as the city of Salzburg while the, where the story of the world's favorite carol had its origins. The first silent night introduces us to two impoverished children, Joseph Moore and Franz Gruber. Not to be confused with Hans Gruber from, um, <laughs> from, movie, from Die Hard. From Die Hard. 
uh, Franz Gruber, uh, who grew up in Austria's cobbled streets and wooded villages. The hard years that shaped them would also destine them to meet one day in a poor country church to unite Gruber's music with Moore's text into this classic carol about the birth of a third poor boy on a quiet night in ancient Palestine. So the story itself goes back and it actually takes you through all these different places that these two individuals uh, grew up in and preached in because they were preachers, they were organists. And it, it tells you a story about the origins of the Christmas carol that had been lost almost immediately after it was created. Mm -hmm. And it was attributed to people like Mozart and Haydn and some of these very famous composers. And when people dug into it and realized it was really these two insignificant individuals, one of which who wrote the lure at uh, the lyrics, Joseph Moore was so poor when he died that he couldn't even afford a funeral. So he basically wound up in this rudimentary unmarked grave and after they went back and they did this research and found out who he was they went back and they built an, a monument to him and now every year on Christmas Eve there's a local choir who gathers around the cemetery where he's buried and sings Chris, uh, sings Silent Night um, very picturesque the way mm -hmm. they did this I okay. mean, they take you into these snow-capped mountains and these little villages and it's i mean it almost looks like a walk through a dickensian you know fairy tale okay the way they do it so it's very well presented um and and just the history of it was was really nice because it's one of my favorite christmas carols it mm -hmm. was one that was my mother's favorite christmas carol so it you know kind of has a personal personal touch to it for me so the First Silent Night on Amazon Prime. And we'll be right back. So I think that was all we had mm -hmm. for this week, which was a lot. Yep. Um, that was a lot of news. Uh, we will be taking, like I said, a couple of weeks off. We'll be back after the new year. Uh, but until then, we would recommend that you, if you don't already do so, subscribe to the podcast. You can catch the audio versions of the podcast listed as Insights and Entertainment. The video versions of the podcast are listed as Insights into Things, and that'll get you all the podcasts from the network. We're listed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon, and Pandora. Uh, and in the meantime, feel free to reach out. Remember, if you if you email us at comments at insights into things and are interested in getting my Mando moments, I will post something up on Medium. So feel free to email us at comments at insights into things dot com. He wasn't fishing or anything. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We stream on Twitch six days a week. This week, seven days a week. Uh, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you do have a free Twitch Prime subscription, which if you threw that our way, we'd appreciate it. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are at insights into things. The audio versions of all of the different podcast, well, actually our entertainment podcasts are at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. And you can catch high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And obviously, if you forget where to find everything, you can go to our main website to find links to everything at uh, www.insightsintothings.com. And I think that's it. Another one in the book. That is it. Have a good Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Yule, Festivus for the rest of us, New Year's, and uh, we'll catch you in 2021. Happy holidays. That, that, <laughs> that just gets it all. 